The Pentagon announced on Wednesday that the US will send Ukraine four sophisticated medium-range rocket systems and ammunition to help try to stall Russian progress in the Donbass region of the country. It will take at least three weeks to get the precision weapons and trained troops onto the battlefield. Well, joining me now is Ukrainian MP Kira Rudik. And Kira, explain to us, um, you're over here in Dublin. I've spoken to you several times um, from your home in Kyiv, from your bunker. You're here in Ireland um, and you have a message. What message are you bringing? Uh, hello, thank you so much for having me. I'm extremely glad being here. My message is my country needs more weapons, more support, and uh, this is what we need to win. Uh, my message is this war will not be a short one. We already see that. And so the world needs to prepare to the marathon, not a sprint. My message is we are expecting that the autumn will be very tough. So let's get ready to that. And getting ready is putting more sanctions in, actually voting for the sanctions and uh, not only talking about them. It's uh, getting Ukraine uh, more support from all the sides, starting from refugees uh, and up to the humanitarian support. And the third point is I'm calling for a humanitarian mission to unblock Ukrainian ports. You know, before the war, Ukraine was top three world's producers of grain, wheat, sunflower oil, corn and tomatoes. And right now, all of this is blocked in Ukraine because Russian ships are blocking our ports. So the world has right now 10 weeks of grain supplies. After that, southern countries like in Africa, in Latin America, they will start experience famine. Famine while in Ukraine, we will not have even a place where to store the excess wheat. We will have to burn it. Can you believe that? So closer to autumn, things will get worse. So the energy bills will go up. Because mm. I think everybody understands that Putin will not become a nicer person closer to autumn. Closer to autumn, the uh, situation with the food supplies will be even worse. So we need to act now so that Ukraine can fight better, so we can push Putin harder, so that the war would end faster. From, from what you're saying, it appears to me that you're saying this, this war can only be won militarily. Absolutely. I strongly believe only that. Because, okay, imagine that we go diplomatic way. Who and what will be the reason for Putin to keep his word? We have been at war with him for eight years. I can tell you one thing about this man. He does not keep his word. Mm -hmm. And whatever peaceful agreement or diplomatic agreement he will get himself in, he will break it then another day. And then what? Um on this and the situation on the ground, um, we are hearing that troops are fatigued. This is a long war now. We are three months into this war. Um, at the start, it was thought maybe this might be a short-lived invasion. We didn't know how it was going to play out. Did you ever imagine that would we, we would be here now in, in this very contritional, attritional war, in this state now that we're looking at this region of Donbass in a very um, extended and bloody conflict, Kira? Nobody could have expected that things will, will turn out like this. So we need to take on of what we have and see what the strategy is. You know, I have been to Davos before coming to England and then Ireland. And I can tell you there is no strategy from the Western leaders. So it's good to be Ukrainian right now because we know what we are going to do. We are going to fight. We are going to ask for more weapons, more support, more mm -hmm. sanctions. So that would be a unified effort uh, that the whole world is uh, making sure that Ukraine wins. This is the only way for us. This is the only way right now for all the countries that are waiting for their, uh, for their grains and wheat. And this is the only way that we will be able to actually stand for the democratic values. Ukraine is acting right now as a shield for the whole Europe, because we know mm -hmm. that Putin announced his plans that he is rebuilding Russian empire. Do you see many countries wanting to be part of this Russian empire? No. You're here in Dublin, and, and, and as you know, Ireland is, is neutral, militarily neutral in this position. Um, what do you think of the level of support we've given, um, opening our doors to Ukrainian refugees, uh, and the response from the Irish government, indeed, to what's happening in your country? 
So I'm meeting with uh, the Irish parliamentarian and speaking to Irish parliament tomorrow. But I can tell you one thing. You guys have been amazing to Ukrainians who are coming here. And it's been so heartwarming to talk to people here in Ireland that, that are saying all the doors are open for us. People are doing so much. People are trying to help. You know, I was walking down the street today and there was a man who stopped me and saying, oh, you're from Ukraine, I see your pin. Can I buy you a cup of tea? Can I buy you a cup of coffee? And it was so nice because I understand that all the political differences, all the things they are put aside because people are supporting people because we are all the same. We all stand for having a good life for our families, for living in peace, for making sure that we we just live, live our normal life. And people here in Ireland have been so supportive, sending donations, sending humanitarian aid back to Ukraine, standing up for us, making demonstrations, setting up schools, setting up English uh, lessons for Ukrainian refugees. So there's been so much help and support, I cannot even begin to tell you. And I only wish that this would continue. On a separate note, I would like to thank for waiving visas for Ukrainians because uh, this is something that Irish government did very well to my people.